Welcome, this video class on the history of sexuality by Michel Foucault is to give an overview of the importance of this work by Foucault for a diagnostics of the present. We finished the free course on the history of sexuality, volume one, last week. And now we will move on to volume two, the use of pleasures next week on Patreon. This will be only for those patrons that support the channel, support this project. I still have to provide English subtitles for the course on volume one. But first, I needed to make some general notes about the history of sexuality as a whole and its relevance to think about the ways of producing truth, the relations of power, and knowledge involved in the production of truth and subjectivity in Western societies today that this work by Foucault makes us reflect upon. The question for Foucault has always been how to rethink our present and its possibilities and limits. Today we will resume some points of the, those classes and indicate some of the paths that the course will take from now on. Students who are going to follow me to volume two of the history of sexuality next week can already get ahead in reading because the first video next week is about the introduction to the book of volume two. Just reminding that this course is free. It is about the first book. The other books I will make available in courses paid for by supporters on Patreon. They will be made in English, so if you like the channel and if you want to learn a lot more, become a supporter, you will have access to the courses that will come later this year. They will be three more courses in addition to this first one that was made for free on the first book of the History of Sexuality, one for each book of the History of Sexuality, with several videos in each course, weekly videos, supplementary materials and live chats to discuss the courses where I will be able to hear you and see you as well. They will be weekly classes, extra reading materials, films and monthly live video chats where I can see and hear you. So don't waste time, go to Patreon, become a supporter, a patron and come back here to the class that starts now. My name is Rodrigo Guim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. Foucault's history of sexuality is a major study of the links in Western culture between sex and truth, sex and subjectivity. It is an examination of the construction of sex as an object in history, culture, language, and in power relations. Foucault challenges what would be nature in the discourse of sex, whether sex as natural, whether gender as natural, or any dogmatic or scientific statements that intends to speak of sexuality as natural. Because in these languages, discourses, what is said is that it would be possible to treat sex as an object and its knowledge would be fully possible to an objective, impartial type of knowledge. On the contrary, Foucault shows how discourses on sex are formed by the very apparatus of sexuality, as we have seen in the video classes. Foucault thus takes us by a critique of the binarisms or dualisms that organize scientific knowledge of sex or the morality that is even more ancient, such as the dualism nature-culture, as well as the dualism man-woman, as organizing principles of all possibilities of being. Woman is not naturally reproductive, it is not its essence to reproduce. This discourse of the essence of the woman as a reproducer 
needed the apparatus of alliance and the apparatus of sexuality so that woman was seen as an essence of reproduction. For Foucault, sexuality is a production of knowledge, of power. It's a historical production. So there's nothing about sexuality that is an ahistorical universal. Because of science, but also because of the dominant culture that science is a part of in this production, sexuality has become an object to know at the same time that it has become a truth of the subject. This is linked to the rise of the human sciences, psychologies and psychiatry, medical sciences, sexology. This issue of talking about sexuality then is also a social historical and historical production. This way of producing sexuality as an object of knowledge and as the truth of the subject. In Christianity, the subject internalizes a struggle between good and evil. The subject produces itself in relation to an eternal inner vigilance because its interiority is linked vertically to God, to universal truth. We can speak here of a vertical axis of truth that goes from within the subject to the greater truth that is God or the universal truth. In this relationship, the subject needs to constantly self-police because God sees everything, sees the most secret inner desires, and sex is part of these secrets, as we have already said. The subject will practice a hermeneutics of the self, a constant vigilance of itself over itself, in order to make good win over evil inside itself. Of course, power relations, churches, families, schools will teach subjects indirectly or and not only directly how to do this self-policing. Because with Christianity we have the condition that actions are not enough to show how much a subject is doing well or doing badly. What matters more than actions and their effects are intentions here. Nietzsche had already talked about this, the primacy of interiority and the intentions that make up interiority for reflection, for laws, for the legal apparatus in the West. Intentions in the West are worth more than the effects of actions. It is about intentions located in the interiority, in conscious or unconscious desire, and how they become the privileged space for reflection on subjectivity and its ex existence. This is where we even have a prehistory of psychologies and of being itself as a psychological being. This psychological being is already a being who is never neutral in these discourses and practices. The subject is always either normal or pathological, and this dualism, this binarism, is a reflection of the morality of good and evil. That is to say, our psychological knowledge is born already loaded with morality. It's not born as a neutral scientific advance, as a progress of knowledge. Although we cannot reduce the psychologies to the normal and pathological dualism, many productions in this field will reflect and be supported by these dualisms. The sciences of sex as a prehistory of psychologies show this. When studying sexuality, Foucault came to study the construction of desire as a subjective experience. And this construction came through changes in subjectivity over time. There was an over-signification of the flesh at first, then of sex and sexuality. The flesh was super signified because it was what should be renounced by the subject in favor of the truth of the soul. The relationship with the truth already operated on a vertical axis between subject and God and by the denial of the entire material world starting with the body itself. 
with the transition to the apparatus of sexuality, this vertical axis relationship with truth still operates, but now the articulator of the relation with truth is no longer the flesh, but the body. This change is significant, it's not only about words. Because if with the flesh there was a renouncement of materiality in favor of the beyond, of the truth that would only dwell in the beyond, with the body as a production of the apparatus of sexuality, we enter into an articulation that allows a quality, a duality, a quality of duality of the body. The body can be either normal or abnormal, healthy or less healthy. The body is now being invested on as an objective. It is the political objective now within biopower, within biopolitics. Now the question will no longer be in a dominant way how to renounce the flesh, but how to have an intentional body, how to have practices of self linked to the truth about oneself. We will have specialists in body, mind, spirit telling us how to align ourselves with the truth of ourselves. The question now is how to maximize ourselves, who we really are, to realize our full potential. To seek a different experience of subjectivity, Foucault went to study history and found in the ancient Greeks then in the Romans, significant differences in relation to the dominant Christian or secular Christian way of producing the truth of the subject. With regard to the Greeks, Foucault found practices of self that aimed at the production of an aesthetic and political subjectivity, of a beautiful life with political effects, let's say, where the political effects of behavior were more important, where the prioritized space of reflection was not located in the private truth, interior to the subject. The main axis of truth production for ancient Greeks was the horizontal axis in relation to others and politics. The intention and desire to become a ruler in ancient Greece were viewed with suspicion, said nothing in themselves. The actions, the modes of relationship and the effects of actions in the world were prioritized above any truth that the subject could ever carry within himself. That is why Foucault went so far in history, precisely in what is considered by many to be the origin of Western culture, to show that in the supposed origin, ancient Greece, everything was quite different. The Greeks were not Western subjects, if these Western subjects are subjects of the truth of desire or subjects who are bearers of truth within themselves. Well, people, this was the last, now really the last video class of the first course in the History of Sexuality, Volume 1. The next video here on the channel will be a video in that essay style that I do and the History of Sexuality course will continue with Volume 2 on the Patreon website for the supporters of the project and of this channel. So if you can, please support this project at Patreon. The link will be in the video description here. With the support, you can have access to all the other courses that I'm going to give this year on the Volumes 2, 3 and 4 of the History of Sexuality and other courses later on Nietzsche, etc. It will be several months of course with weekly video lessons, complimentary reading material, live chats where I can see and hear you to answer questions and discuss. So please go to Patreon and see you next week.